Welcome to another tutorial. In this video, we'll be learning how the prototype feature works in PenPot. It's a really powerful feature. It basically lets us connect buttons and add interactions so that when that button is clicked, it performs a certain action. Like in this case, I'm telling it when this login button is clicked, go to the welcome page. So if we go to the view mode and see what that looks like, it'll show us a demo of this app in this case, which by the way, this app you can download. It's created by the PenPot team, so you can follow along if you want to. It's just one available in the libraries. If we click on this login button now, it goes to the next page. Usually we have to right click and then left click over here in order to see the different parts of our design and it's not really interactive. It's all just pictures. So if we click on the buttons, nothing happens. So we have to tell PenPot this, this uh, rectangle is actually a button and when we click on it, I want you to go to this certain page or perform this certain action. So let's go back and take a closer look at how that works. It's important to know that all of these are boards. If you're not familiar with how boards work, you might want to watch the other video um, because you can't you can't just do an interaction with something drawn out here on your canvas. It's, it has to be a board. Um, uh, prototypes are very much board related. So this one, for example, we created this. If we click on it, uh, we can't see that little arrow anymore that we saw before because we're in the design panel. The design panel lets us change our color and change all the information about how the object looks. But the prototype panel lets us change what it, how it behaves when it's clicked on. So now when we're in the prototype panel, we see this line appear. If we're in the design panel, it's not there. Also, just because we're in the prototype panel, if we click off into something else, we won't see that. If we click on a different object, it's just empty. So you have to click on the object that has those rules applied to it in order to see those rules. And there's more options also. If we click these three dots here, there's a drop down, and we can say, instead of on click, we could say, for example, on mouse enter. That means as soon as the mouse comes in contact with this object, it will perform the action. In this case, the action is navigate to the onboarding board. So, but we want to say on mouse click. And the login button, we really don't want it to go to this welcome board. We want it to just log into the home page, which is right down here. So I'm going to delete this interaction by hovering up here and going to the minus, and then I'll left click and drag and connect it to the home screen instead. So now let's go to the home screen. And maybe the sign up button is what I want to go to the welcome screen. So now we have two different things that happen from this. This is the first page they'll go to. And we have two different uh, interactions or two different paths that they can follow. These are called flows. So right now this is, it says flow one. So we have a certain flow that people can see of how this app interacts. Let's follow this down and see it's going to go to this page. And we have a couple options of how this appears. If we click these three dots, we can change the, uh, the animation to dissolve, which will fade this in slowly. We can do a slide, or we can do a push. Push and slide are kind of similar, but they have some differences. Let's show the slide first. Uh, we'll just leave this how it is. We can change the direction that it slides. Let's slide from uh, left. The duration will be 300 milliseconds, and the easing will just keep this at linear. So let's see what this looks like, the slide. If we click here on our login, it will slide over and now we're to the home page. Nothing's happening in the home page because we haven't set up those interactions yet, but that's pretty cool. And we can always click the back arrow and you know cycle through and find that one again. If you want to see it again, we click it. That's what the slide looks like. Uh, we can come back over here. And now that we're at the home page, we figured out how to get here. We can say when this plant is clicked on, when anything within here, notice this is an entire group. If we ex expand it, there's buttons in here, different things. We can just say if the user taps on this, anything within this blue box, take them to the details page of that plant, which happens to be right here. So now this board, if we want to find out how that interaction works, if we get into the information about it, notice we don't have the option for it. We have to go back and click on the object that is producing this interaction, and then we can get to these options. And we can say we want this to maybe do a, a push and we'll have it push from the left also and linear. So we'll see what the difference are, differences are between those. Uh, and then we can come down and say when this button is clicked here, go to the cart page. When the checkout button is clicked, go to the checkout page. And if at any time they click this button up here, these back buttons, we can just say, you know what, add an interaction. And what, I'm not gonna tell it specifically where to go. I'm just gonna say, uh, go to the previous screen. So I can get in here, and, and again, this is a group. So to get, I don't want it, when they click anything up here, I don't want it to happen. I just want it when they click this black arrow. So I have to double click to get into just the arrow inside of the group. And then I say add interaction, 
and then I say the interaction is previous screen. I could also just say I could manually take it to the previous screen. That accomplishes the same thing, so either way. So now if we walk through this, see what it looks like. We log in and it does a slide. And if I click on this, it'll do a push. Notice the difference. The push kind of moves the whole thing over. Um, it's a little, little bit different, but they, they look kind of similar. Um, the cart, we'll go into here, checkout, perfect. I can always go back and it'll go back to the previous screen. Uh, let's make this profile work. So when you click on the profile image, let's make that do something. So I'll come in here and I'll say when this profile image is clicked, notice I'm not seeing the green arrow because I'm not in the prototype tab. It put me in the design tab. So let's go back to the prototype tab. We have an option we can left click on here and let's go down. Oh, we've got to find our way down to that page, which this is the profile page. So we'll click on the profile page. We'll make this button again so that we can go back to the previous screen. And then one really th cool thing I wanna show you is over here, this is what the search screen is supposed to look like. When you click on the magnifying glass, it brings up the search dialog and it sort of grays out or creates, um, yeah, it grays out the screen that you're on so you can type in what you're searching for and focus on that. If we want to create an interaction for this, we can go over to a different part of the app. We can double click in to get on just the magnifying glass and then left click and drag this down. But there's a better way to do this. So this is basically gonna transition from this board to this board. But the whole idea here is to have this transparency. And so what I've done over here, I've taken this board, I just duplicated it. And then I deleted everything in the back. So if we come back to the design panel, we can see this just has a transparent background. So if I add background in, there's just complete transparent. And that's because we can do what's called an overlay. And so I'll come over here, let's go back to that magnifying glass and let's break that. So we go to the prototype and we can just left click and drag and move it over. We don't have to delete it and then rebuild it. We can just move an interaction to go to a different uh, transition to a different board. And then we say, instead of navigate to, because in that case, it would just show this with the transparency and it'd be transparent into a nothing in the background. We'll want to change the action to toggle overlay. And what that does, it overlays this board with the transparency on top of whatever board was there already, which, which will give us this kind of look. If we click over here, we can click this add background overlay. And we can also say close when clicking outside. So if they click outside of the overlay, it will just close this. And so now, did, I, did that? If those changes stuck, yeah, they did. So we can see what this looks like. Oh, actually we need to change one thing, but let's look at it first to see a problem you might run into when doing overlays. We log in, we click on the search. It, it did it, it brought it up. It kind of grayed out the background a little bit, but notice we're seeing the keyboard and we're not seeing the overlay exactly how we want the search interface. And that is because if we click on these three dots here, we can see we're toggling the overlay on but it's relative to the button that we're clicking on. And since the button's here, it's going to center it. We told it the position to be centered on top of this. So it centered our overlay. It basically did this, if I can, if I can show it. It's centering this board right, oh, I can't really show it, but it's centering it on top of, on top of this uh, search icon. We don't want that. What we want to do is, and I broke my interaction, Let's reconnect this. Let's go to uh, toggle overlay and let's say relative to home. So relative to this board, center it on this board. And since these boards are the same size, it's going to create that look. And we'll say add background overlay. And this time we'll say dissolve to create a nice dissolve animation. Maybe we'll do ease in to kind of give it a little bit more uh, animation character. And now when we look at this, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so we can see the whole thing. We log in, and if we click this, it shows it kind of fades into there. And I didn't create this is what I'm what I'm saying. If we just if we just said navigate to, it would look like this, just with black. Uh, but instead, and this is what the other one looks like. So log in. Here's that animation one more time. Uh, and we can change the speed of it, and it's just overlaid on top there. So that's one way you can do overlays. Another interesting thing that you can do you can do animation in. So sometimes if you have like a menu that you want to pop in from the side or the top, you can do that same thing. So you can have an overlay animate in and it's not gonna look exactly right in this case, 
but what that would look like is instead of dissolve we can do a slide and then if we slide that in uh, it would slide over which you wouldn't want to do it with a search bar but you could do it with a menu and then that would slide in from the side and when you click it again it slides out and so that's something cool you can do too also just note penpod is still in development uh, it's completely usable right now but they're going to be adding more options for animation so right now the options are i think they're pretty basic um, you know the options for animation are dissolve slide and push and we can't animate an individual object but since this is all built on SVG and CSS standards, uh, there's no reason we can't do any type of animation you can imagine. And if you're a developer yourself, since PenPod is open source, you can help develop those if you want to, or you could fork the code and, and develop those yourself. So really, really cool, really good options. Um, uh, one thing I'll, I'll say in closing is that we can share this interaction, or we can share this interactive prototype. All we have to do is come up here and click this button, share prototype. It will create a link for us. We copy this link. And then anyone that has that link can send it in an email or you can someone could open this on a on a mobile device and actually tap through and it would feel kind of like a, a native mobile app oh we didn't tell it where to start with our flow and the flow they're in right now is this right here you can choose the flow that we're in so now we're in flow one because you could have multiple different uh options for people to go through but now we're in flow one that's where i want to start and if i click log in they're doing this just notice this is all happening uh, PenPod is hosting this right now for us, but the person that we send this link to, they'll be able to come in here and demo this app without needing to sign up for PenPod, without even knowing what PenPod is. So that's really, really cool, a way that you can share these prototypes with people, with a client or with your team. So that's the basics of the prototype feature in PenPod. Go ahead and leave your questions and comments below if you have any, and I look forward to catching you in the next video.